Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now, as is seeming to become something of a custom, today's Friday video is a little bit more conversational than it is educational. And I'm just kind of settling into that kind of uh, rhythm with these Friday videos now. Uh, today what I want to talk about are five movies and TV shows that you may have overlooked. I'm sure uh, that you're probably going to be familiar with a couple of these on this list, but maybe there'll be a couple there that you're not so familiar with, and um, trust me, they deserve uh, your time and effort to check them out. I've linked to all of these shows down below in one form or another. Uh, a couple of the uh, movies I couldn't find the uh, the full version of to watch for free, so you might have to spend a couple of quid on Netflix or YouTube Premium or however you want to watch them, but trust me, I'm a guitar teacher. <laughs> they are well worth uh, watching. So, without further ado, let's get on to the list. Stormy Monday. Okay, Stormy Monday. This is a movie that came out in 1988, I believe, 31 years ago. Dear me. Um, basically, the plot is that nightclub owner Sting is being squeezed by American mob boss uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones's character's ex-mistress, played by Melanie Griffith, falls in love with Sting's gopher, played by Sean Bean, and mayhem then ensues. Um, it's a good rollicking yarn of the underdog taking on the big bad mob boss, and, well, I won't spoil it for you to let you know how things turn out, but it's a great film. And um, suffused through the film, there are uh, examples of blues, jazz, bebop and soul music that, that you know, um, imprint themselves in, into the film, almost like another character. Um, I've never heard the soundtrack album, I'm not even sure if there is one, but if there is, it's probably well worth checking out. You've got kind of John Coltrane and B.B. King and Marvin Gaye and, you know, a whole host of uh, great... Um, blues and jazz and soul luminaries uh, contributing to the soundtrack and uh, there's one scene in the film actually where a couple of uh, Tommy Lee Jones's heavies uh, storm into Sting's office and try to put the squeeze on him and how that gets turned around is something to behold. There's just an air of menace and smouldering um, danger throughout the film, and that is one of the high points. I'd say that scene there is probably one of my favourite uh, movie scenes of all time, really. It's up there with, um, you know, that uh, famous opening scene from The Godfather, for example. You know, it, it's that level of, of great cinema, I think. It's a very underrated film and well worth checking out. I've linked to it, like all the rest of them, down below. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find the full movie available to watch for free on YouTube. So if you want to watch this, and I highly recommend that you do, uh, you're going to have to spend about £2 on uh, YouTube Premium to watch it, or I'm sure it'll be on Netflix or Amazon Prime or wh wherever you stream movies from regularly. It's called Stormy Monday. It stars uh, Sean Bean, Sting, Melanie Griffith and Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, yeah, go and watch it. Well worth your time. Crossroads. Yes, indeed. Crossroads. Now, uh, for anybody that was into blues or rock or guitar or all three back in the 1980s, I'm sure you've probably seen this film and are well aware of it, but it was an entire generation ago, so I'm going to mention it just in case there's anybody who hasn't seen it. Essentially, the plot is pure bubblegum as it goes, but um, the plot is that there's this young uh, classical guitar student who is obsessed with the blues, and he teams up with um, an old blues guy who was uh, supposedly a contemporary of Robert Johnson, and they embark on an odyssey uh, down to the famous crossroads in the Robert Johnson song, I Went Down to the Crossroads, the very same. And it all encompasses like a Faustian pact with the devil, and, you know, there's... Um, a great sense of fun about this film, I think. Blues purists at the time, and still do, I suspect, hate this film because it is it is admittedly a little bit trite in the way that it, it treats uh, blues as a genre. But if you just want to watch 
uh, a 90 minute film that's entertaining, has a plot, a beginning, a middle and an end and has some great blues tunes all the way through it, then that it delivers exactly that. And I think um, anybody who's ever seen this film will tell you about the, uh, the famous guitar duel at the end between um, the lead character, the, uh, the classical guitar student, played by Ralph Macchio of Karate Kid fame, and uh, Steve Vai. And uh, it's one of these big climactic, it's the, well, it is the big climactic uh, m- uh, moment in the film. And yeah, it's great fun. It really is. And there's some fantastic guitar playing, blues and rock, especially in that final scene there. And I just want to mention as well that the uh, the, the actor who played uh, the, the classical student, Ralph Macchio, uh, couldn't play guitar, but he does a fantastic job of miming quite convincingly to um, the guitar parts played by, I think it was Ry Cooder and Alan Roth who played his uh, guitar parts in the film. And of course, Steve Vai is just Steve Vai. He looks absolutely demonic, as you would expect, as, you know... Um, the uh, the guitar player from hell in that final scene so yeah it's called crossroads and it is well worth checking out if uh, you fancy a little bit of uh, guitar and blues related entertainment again it's linked down below or you can find it i'm sure on netflix or whatever streaming service uh, floats your boat beecham now from blues to classical music don't switch off it's worth your while staying a little while longer i promise you um this uh tv show as it was it was actually a play for tv it was called beecham and it was about the life and times of the famous conductor sir thomas beecham who was a bit of a rock star in his day he was a bit of a bad lad as well uh, this is in. It's set mainly in the interwar years in in the UK, uh, when even divorce was a scandal, and uh, his lifestyle really did scandalise high society. And it was. It's a play written by Ned Sherin, a, a great wit and raconteur. And this play stars Timothy West in the lead role as Sir Thomas Beecham. If you're not into classical music, just fast forward through the musical parts because I promise you there are more belly laughs per square inch in this one TV play than you will find in an entire series of some modern insipid limp-wristed sitcom i mean has anybody ever actually had a belly laugh at an episode of my family i'm sure i haven't but it's it's really funny i mean i won't ruin it for you by telling you all the jokes now but um there's one instance where and these are all true these are all true stories there's one instance where sir thomas beecham after a performance is meeting uh, fans at the stage door and a lady comes up to him and says sir thomas would you do me the honor of being godfather to my child he says certainly madam but why bring god into it or another one where um he's uh, conducting uh, a per- the orchestra for a performance of the visiting Bolshoi Ballet. And the problem is, you see, that he's got a pressing dinner engagement with his uh, latest floozy after the performance. So he wants to hurry up and, and, and get on with things. So he really pushes the tempo throughout the performance and, uh, you know, gets done early as, as he was wanting to do. And he's heard chortling as he steps down from the podium that made the little buggers hop you know uh, there's one scene that that you have to watch where um he expresses his displeasure at the playing of a substandard cello player uh in the in the orchestra he's conducting i won't as i say i won't spoil what uh, his put down is but if it doesn't make you absolutely belly laugh then i'm afraid there's just something wrong with you <laughs> that's all there is to it so there you go it's called beecham it was on on tv in the uk in about 1990 i seem to remember and it is linked down below so give it a give it a try out as i say if you're not into classical music just fast forward through the music and enjoy the humor it is worth your while i promise you roadhouse Okay then, Roadhouse. Now, this is another one from the late 80s, and it did kind of get overshadowed uh, a little bit by other big movie releases at the time. It's not a fantastic film, I'll be honest with you. It's never going to be regarded as a as a great of 20th century cinema, but it is an entertaining yarn that 
keeps you engrossed and if you're into uh, rock and blues and guitar music then there is a special reason for watching this film I'll talk about that in a moment Uh, but basically what's going on is that Patrick Swayze plays uh, a guy called Dalton who is the best bouncer in the business and he's hired by the owner of um, a small roadhouse bar in small town rural America somewhere to come and clean it up basically things are getting a little bit naughty and a little bit out of hand um, so he arrives and he upsets a lot of the local thugs and heavies and bad lads and ne'er-do-wells uh, because he's intruding on their territory and upsetting the apple cart in general Um, What makes this a great film for guitar fans, though, is that it featured uh, Jeff Healy, the Jeff Healy band. They were the resident band in the said Roadhouse, and there are plenty of great performances throughout the film uh, of Jeff Healy. Now, I can't swear to this, but um, it does have a feeling to me, a little bit like another film that almost made it onto this list of commitments. Alan Parker, who directed the commitments, said that um, he recorded all of the music, all the musical performances were actually live performances. The performance that you see on screen is the musicians actually playing, and that certainly feels like it's the case in this film as well. Um, It doesn't look to be like there's much miming going on, I'll be honest with you. And Jeff Healy and his band absolutely tear it up in this film. As ever, it turns into one of these uh, the underdog versus the big local villain kind of stories, and I think you can probably guess which way things turn out um, in a movie like this. Great fun. It's called Roadhouse. Lots of great music from the Jeff Healy band, and um, you know Patrick Swayze is on form, just doing the the whole kind of Patrick Swayze late eighties tough guy kind of thing. Check it out. Uh, it's linked down below, and well, let's see what's next, shall we? Howard Goodall's 20th Century Greats, The Beatles. Right, let me say first of all that I am a Beatles fan, but I'm not a Beatles fan in the way that some people are. You know those kind of people that you meet who, um, they can tell you exactly what was unusual about the Scandinavian release of Please Please Me because of the B-side or whatever, or they can can point to some misprint on an album sleeve that, um, you know, makes that particular album sleeve particularly collectible, all of that kind of stuff. I have no truck with that, but I do like their music. And in this documentary, Howard Goodall, who, if you don't know who he is, he is... um, well, first and foremost, I guess he's a serious classical composer um, who does, who's recorded many and composed many serious choral and classical works. But he also has a little bit of a sideline doing TV themes. Uh, Red Dwarf is one of his. QI is another one. A bunch of them. Um, and in this documentary, where he presents in a in an interesting and engaging manner, he makes the case that. When musicologists and historians look back in a hundred years' time, say, at the late 20th century, they will see Lennon and McCartney in the same sort of light that we now look back at the likes of Haydn, Mozart, Handel, etc. Uh, you know, serious composers, and he sets forth the case for this uh, in, in, in great clarity in this documentary, I think. Um, it's it's marvellous hearing these tunes that you're familiar with um, taken to pieces and explained in a way that is um, it, it really does show the complexity but it, it's done in a way that which is simple and accessible uh, just the, the analysis of Penny Lane that's in this documentary is worth uh, watching it for it alone it reinforces my view that uh, the pundits in the 50s who you know get decried because they say they said at the time that rock and roll was a passing fad and it would only last a few years essentially they were right because by the early 60s you know um elvis was making some god-awful movies uh chuck berry and jerry lee lewis were in disgrace um Buddy Holly and Eddie Cochran were dead and Little Richard had gone back to the church. So, you know, what was rock and roll by 1960? It was Pat Boone, you know, and Fabian and, you know, all these kind of matinee idols. And then, you know, in the early 60s, along come the Beatles and and repackaged the same compositional and, and songwriting techniques that had been used a generation earlier with the likes of Irving Berlin and Cole Porter for a new audience. 
And as well as doing that, they also single-handedly, I would say, pushed the boundaries of what can be achieved in a recording studio. So yes, a very, very interesting and worthwhile and satisfying little documentary to watch this. Even if you're not a Beatles fan, if you have any interest at all in the development of popular music in the latter half of the 20th century, then this is worth your while and uh, yeah, certainly worth a watch. So check it out. So there you go. I hope you found something there to uh, help you while away the uh, coming long winter evenings. And yeah, they're all well, well worth checking out. So, you know, if you haven't seen any of them yet, or if there's a couple there that you are unfamiliar with, then, you know, recommended viewing. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity now before uh, we end the video, um, because now Halloween's out of the way. It is, of course, officially Christmas. I quite enjoy Christmas, but I did used to prefer it when it started in December. Um, I have a Christmas charity single coming out. Um, it's going to be in aid of Zoe's Place, uh, the charity that I did the Guitars for Good Causes um, uh, appeal for. Zoe's Place is uh, a charity in Middlesbrough which provides palliative, respite and end-of-life care to children under five with terminal illnesses. And uh, a couple of years ago what happened was I just for, just for a bit of a laugh really, I recorded an instrumental version of my favourite Christmas tune, I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day by Wizard. It's, you know, one of those Christmas tunes that immediately transports you back to the, uh, the misty-eyed, rose-tinted Christmases of your childhood. Well, that's the one that does it for me, I'm afraid. Uh, so I just thought I'd have a go at recording it. And uh, then I discovered that the company who I use to... Uh, distribute my music, they're called DistroKid, allow you for a fee to release a cover version. So I put it out um, and it's been sat there and it's probably only about 20 pence in Spotify listens ever since then. So I thought, well, it's sat there doing nothing and I've got this association with Zoe's Place. So well, let's just release it as a charity single. As you can see here, 100% uh, of the money that this uh, that this single really that this single raises will go to Zoe's place. Um, I don't receive a penny, and I'm paying the fee uh, for the licenses to uh, release this. So all of the uh, money that's um, that's raised will go to Zoe's place and uh, yeah so i've linked to it down below i would love to give you a sample of it right now but uh, we all know what youtube's copyright policies are like even if i even if i do have the uh, the, the permissions and the licenses in place to uh, record and release this tune they're going to jump on it so check it out below it's available on all major platforms spotify uh, Apple Music, iTunes, um, Google Play, Amazon, everywhere where you normally buy music, you can buy this uh, via the links below. Uh, so that's just hopefully something that will raise a little bit of cash for Zoe's Place uh, in the run-up towards Christmas. Um, if, you're going to, um, if you're going to purchase a copy, then thank you very much. Have a very Merry Christmas. Uh, and of course, I will just mention before I go that I have courses on sale. Uh, a slide guitar course, uh, a course on modes, a course on blues, uh, an entry-level beginner's guitar course, uh, an entry-level lead guitar course, and a little bit more of a advanced lead guitar course. And I am, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, currently working on a course based upon the style of uh, a certain Mr. Gilmore of Pink Floyd fame. And that will be, hopefully, out for the Christmas market. Cha-ching, as they say. Uh, so that's pretty much it for today, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, informative, and maybe a little bit in inspiring. And if you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and give me a like while you're at it. And if you'd like to uh, just buy me a pint or support this channel, then there's a PayPal link down below, or you could buy a T-shirt, details, at the end of the video and with that i'll wish you all a very good day have a great weekend and i look forward to seeing you all again next time around bye for now folks and don't forget before you go to check out my udemy courses which you can see are available via my website which is also where you can contact me to get in touch for some one-to-one -one tuition either via skype or in person if you live local to me i also have merchandise available on my teespring store and of course all of the links are in the description. See you next time, chaps. Bye.